Hello NCA students, this is Joe. Okay, uh, with this video, I'm going to go through your home-based learning activities and how you can assess it. Okay, now I'm in the module uh, Blackboard. So, okay, to go to this page, you just click onto the e-learning activities. Okay, there are two items here to read through. Okay, the first item here is the, a guide to set up your remote access uh, software called TeamViewer and then your lab schedules to assess our lab. Okay, the reason why you have to go to the uh, lab uh, computer because uh, we want you to uh, set up a PLC program and then also at the same time we want you to test it out because for the testing we need a PLCs to link to. Okay, so uh, for the access, please follow your sh your schedule. Okay, based on the your admin numbers and your class. Okay, after that you get the your team viewer ID and your SS computer, okay? So in my this uh, video, I'm also using TeamViewer. I'm remote logging to my the other computer and assessing the VC logics, okay? Okay, uh, if you want to try out your own outside of your home-based learning or outside of this uh, class schedule, you can also download the VC logic software from the Unitronics uh, website, it's over here. And please download uh, version 9.8.2, which is using which is used in our lab. Please do not use the other newer version because if you do it in the newer versions, we can open your programs in the lab. So bear in mind. Okay, now uh, let me go through your task assignment. Okay, uh, you are required to uh, obtain the last four digits of your admin number. For my example, my admin number is one two three four five six seven. So I'm going to use four five six and seven. And then I have to display the phone number in the PLC 7 segment display in the following sequence. So first display number 4 followed by blank 1 second and number 5 blank 1 second, number 6 blank 1 second, number 7 and blank 1 second. And next I want you to loop it for 2 times followed by stop at blank display after 2 times. Okay, so the following weeks you have to submit your assignments. Okay, to your respective lecturer, okay, it will be contribute 5 out of 10 in your general performance score. Okay, without further ado, let me bring you to the, the actual program that you need to develop. Okay, so to start off with the new projects, you just open the VC Logic program, go to projects, new, if, okay. okay, followed by choosing the right uh, PLC, so this is V130. So to choose a PLC, just click onto the visions. You can select the correct PLCs for our lab. So we are using V130. Next, we have to choose a snap in I/O. Click here. Ours is V130 33R34. Click here and click OK. Okay, there you go. This is our workspace. Okay. Uh, to make it shorten for my videos, I have already pre-written uh, the, the program for you guys. So let me. Uh, just open the program for you. So I don't want to save it my current program. So, okay, I already have this HPL uh, PLC program. So for information, my this PLC program is based on the our lab five. Okay, subtopic one point six, page number ten. Okay, so let me open the, my HPL program. Okay, there we go. So. Whenever you open a new program, I want you to make sure uh, you have checked the correct model number and the series by clicking this hardware configurations. Okay, if this is correct, and then just click OK. Okay, next thing I want you to check is the communications. So make sure you go to connections, communication and OS. Okay, for the lab, we are using lab 1, uh, sorry, COM 1. For my PC, I'm using COM 16. So this is a slight difference. Porrix 115200, we use serial communications and then please check your communications. Make sure you can see the OS versions. That means your PC is connected to the PLC. After that, just click exit. Okay. So firstly, okay, uh, I'm going to use I0 as a input switch to start my number display. Okay. So to get the I0, you just click on this I, this, imp this direct contact. Okay. And then after that, Okay, let me show you. You just use I0 after that click OK. Okay, there you go. Okay, next, 
we are going to use C0. C0 is a counter. So this is inverted input, right? So choose this, okay? Inverted contact. So this will be C0. C0 is a C number, okay? This is a value because I'm going to loop for two times. So I'm using two here. Okay, so this is something like a inverted context. That means after the counter has counted for two times, it will cut off the connections. Meaning that no matter I on my I0, it can it can proceed to next number anymore because why my C0 has been cut off. Okay, no more power for the for the number to display. Okay, next I'm using TD10. So my TD10 for, for my case is a, is a for the looping purpose. Okay, okay later you will see that TD10 over here. So the TD10 is the last timer display, okay? Okay, for my last number also. Uh. After my last number, this is the last timer. After that, I go back to my loop to do what? To, to cut off and then restart my loop again. That's why I'm using TD10, okay? This is for mainly for the restarting the loop, okay? Okay, next, I'm using TD3 as a starting timer, okay? To, to activate next timer, which is TD4, okay? So at the same time, when you on your I0, right, your first number will be display, okay? For my case, my first number is number 4, okay? So my MB101 is my number 4, okay, good. Okay, after that, after my number is display, my TD3 will activate TD4, meaning it will wait for 1 second. During that time, there will be a blank display because of why my TD3 is being 1 second, it will cut off the, my first number. So you will see the blank display. Okay, after the blank display, it will trigger the TD5. Okay. At the same time, your TD4 will display the next number. Okay, so your, my next number will be number 5. Okay, so my MB102 is number 5. Okay, so let me give you the... Okay, pen display here. Just for information, my MB101 is number 4 display. My MB102 is number 5 display and my MB103 is number 6 display. Okay? Basically, operations are the same. What I did was, okay, after you have created the number 2, okay, the, the second number, which is number 5, you can just simply copy paste these three lines, paste it over here, okay, and then you just change the TD to be TD5, TD5, TD6, 6, 7, 6, 7, and the third number. Same thing for the last number, number 4. You just copy the three lines, change the timer accordingly. Okay? Can? Okay, next part will be the, after number 4, fourth number it has been displayed, you have to show me the uh, blank. Because why? For the fourth number and the, my first number, you need a, a blank display. Okay. So as you see, my TD10 is the last timer. After, ten, after one second of TD10, I will cut off the loop. So they will restart the loop. Okay, can? Okay, next, this is a designing part of the number display. Okay, so firstly, you have to go to your HMI display here. So you have to create a seven segment lines. Okay, so you just draw a lines using this uh, line command. Just draw a line here. After that, you have to, to just double click, you have to give a MB111. Remember, MB111 is to output to height. Okay, remember, uh, it's output to height. So later on, you must know, we have to output to show. So we must do something trick later on. Okay, next, for this line, we give a name 112. For this line, we give draw a line and then give the name 113, 114, 115, and 116. Okay, 116 here, and 117, last one. Okay, okay for your case, you... This is for my explanation, that's why I'm using this uh, text, text that we get from here. Okay, for you, you may not need to show this. Okay, for me, this is for illustration only. So I'm just using text showing the MB111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117. Okay. Okay, after you have drawn the seven segment and then link to the respective MB, let me bring you back to the these main routines here. Okay, now, my display numbers are 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, this is number 4, number 5, number 6, 
and number 7. Okay, so how can we output the MB111? MB111 is, isn't it the first bar? Okay, so let's look at the my first MB101. This is MB102. MB103 and MB104. Okay, so let's look at the bar here. Okay, do you see any bar in the, the first number, MB101? Don't have. If you don't have, you can just ignore. How about the next MB102? You have it, right? So you have to put MB102 here. How about the third number, MB103 for number 6? Yes, I need. How about MB104, number 7? Yes, I need. If you need, then you have to connect all these uh, three blocks to the MB111. So remember, this is the inverted output, okay, to show. Okay, huh? so we do the inverted output to show. To get this inverted, you just right click, then you can choose the inverted sign here, inverted output file. Okay, should we move on to the next? Okay, MB112 is the, okay, the side line over here, MB112. Okay, so now, let's see which number need MB112. 4, yes, I need. Number 5, I don't need. Number 6, I don't need. And I number 7, I need. So my number 4 is MB101. So I need. Okay, my number 7 is MB104. Yes, I need. So I have to connect to MB112 with inverted. Okay? Okay, for the, for the third display line, which is MB113. Uh, so I need it for MB101. So there we go. I have here. How about 102? Yes, I need have it here. And MB103, I need. And MB104, I need. Okay? So let's look at here. Ah, so I've connected MB101, 102, 103, 104 to the 113. Okay, same thing apply for the other line display. MB14, 15, 116, and 117. Okay? I want you to try it yourself for your respective numbers. Okay, next. I'm using MB104. Okay, as a counter. Okay, I'm using negative edge. So this negative edge, first thing you have to get from the positive P. After that, you just right click. You can change it to negative pulse. Okay. Okay. So I'm using MB104 as the last number. That means every time when my counter reaches to the last number, I'm going to increase the counter by one. So to increase the count, I have to use the increment counter. Okay. So this increment counter you can get from the Met functions here, just click, okay? After that, okay, uh, you have to create a C. So this C is C0, followed by 2, okay? Okay? So next, the last line, or last letter, I'm using I1 as a reset to the CO2. CO is a C0, 2 is the display number, uh, number of times, okay? The value of the counter, so 2. So that means that when your counter reach to the count of two ready, your circuit will not work anymore. That's why we need to design a reset uh, switch. Okay, so I'm for that case I'm using I1 to reset. So far so good. Okay. Okay, after you have done, okay, you have to download your code. So to download the code, there is a download button here. But make sure that your P your PC has connected to the PLC. So I already show you that my PC is connected to PLC. So just simply just click download button. So wait for some times. Okay, you will download the data into the PLC. Okay, so since I already downloaded previously, so it's identical, so it prevents me from download again. Okay. So to run the uh, program, so since you are away from the our lab. You can use these online test functions. Just click on this. Okay. Make sure that you just you press the play or run PLC button. Okay. So what happened that my IO is is connected, but my CO2 is cut off. Let's take a look. Look at my counter here. My counter now, now my value is two. Okay. Okay. So that's why I have to reset my I1. So you ask me, sir, I don't have the PLC now. How can I reset? Okay, you, you can simply reset by click onto the I1. Okay, after that, right click, 
you can force it to set it to 1. So that means your counter is being resetted. Okay. After you have reset, you can right click, you can force it back to 0. Okay. Can. So next, you can use this HMI. Okay, this is HMI okay, display. Followed by there is a remote access. So you can see the number display already here. 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then followed by 7. Okay, after the second count, it will stop at the blank display. Get it? Okay. You can also open this uh, HMI window from the main routing also. You just click this remote access. Click here. Okay. So to start off again, okay, what you can do is, okay, let's go back to the I0. So I can make the I0, okay, to force it to 0. Okay, let me switch it off the I0. Okay. Okay, next, I will also switch, uh, reset back my uh, counter, bring the I1 to B, right click, okay, force it to 1. So you see the counter is now reset. After that, I will change back to 0. Okay. Okay, so now I'll go back to the I0 now. Okay, I zero now. So now this is your HMI. Okay, I'm going to create a start a uh, start a button. Okay, force to one. Okay, now you see the number four blank. Number five blank. Number six blank. Number seven and blank and loop. Number four blank. Number five blank. Number six blank and number seven and then blank. So it will hold at the blank display. Okay. So I'll show you one more time of the program, okay, slowly, so that you can take your time to uh, program by, by your own, okay? So to stop the online test, just uncheck the, the class button here, okay? Now let me show you slowly for my PLC program. Okay, so by the way, you also have another choice if you want to try. You can also use a timer as a cut cutoff, okay, for this particular loop, or if you want to count for two times. Okay, so let me give you a hint. Okay, now I have four number display, and I have a one second interval between each number. So that means each number display is one second, and then blank is one second. So four blank, four blank, four blank. Four blank. Let's say I got four numbers. Okay, so total I need eight seconds. So every loop I need eight seconds. So if I want two loops, eight times two, so it become sixteen seconds. So I can use the sixteen second TD. Okay, to output here at the same time I can also cut off this uh the whole loop. Okay, using the TD also. You may try out. Okay, this is another options to cut off at two times. So you can also cut out three times, you just times eight times uh, three. Okay? Okay, good. So with that, uh, let me end my uh, video here. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, let me know. Okay, with that, uh, I want to thanks all of you and see you guys next week. Okay, goodbye.